Hi, so today I want to cover four loops and arrays. This is the second lesson of DSK coding. This is just to make a summary of what was previously transpired. And then I'm also going to add a little bit more to it. So I want to do four loops arrays and then do a basic example of using a hangman game where the user enters a word and then they have to guess the word back. So the game will be kind of complex or simple depending how you look at it. You can make it more complex. I'll add an extra task later on for you guys to make it more complex. Um, in the meanwhile, just for loops and arrays. So what is a for loop? Oh, actually it's a for statement. It's globally known as a for loop if you talk to anybody who's a coder. And the first statement is initialization, termination, and increment. So what termination is, is the same thing as condition. So your if loop or your in your while loop, you have that check to see if something is true inside those brackets. Well, that just goes in the termination section of this, which is the condition. Initialization is just so that you can have a um, variable that is you're going to use to, for an example, as a counter. And then at the end of the statement, it will execute the increment or decrement. So i++, which is from the first run, it will be i is 0. 0 is less than 10, therefore it will do the statement. Go to the incrementation, i is 1. Check here, i is less than 10, 1 is less than 10. Do the statement and so forth, and that will do it 10 times in total 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Once it gets to 9, and it goes plus 1 here and checks 10, 10 is less than 10, false. I won't do, execute the false statement anymore. So it's really simple, um, and I'll do a practical example in just a little bit. Just want to go through arrays first. So, arrays arrays are, the, are a form of list. So, what is a list? A list is just a collection of items of the same type, and in an array, it's just a fixed size sequential collection of elements of the same type. Now, what does it mean by collection of elements? So all this array does, it acts as an index to say where the stuff is stored in memory. So our variable usually points us to the our variable usually points us to the value that it that is stored in memory. So if we call it Harry. Harry is equal to 18 because we're getting his age or something. So then Harry is the variable uh, that indexes 18. So we'll have 18 in memory. So Harry will be here and 18 in memory. So it references the, uh, the value point. Now what arrays do is they have the same type and they can be a collection of the same type. So we define them using these square brackets and we can use something like strings, ints, um, characters, floats, doubles, whatever object you like, as long as it's all of the same type. So we first define it using string or whatever type it is, and then we use brackets. Then we give it a variable name, just like you did before. Then we say it's equal to new string and how many spots there are that we want in this array list. So if there are 10 items in this array list here at the beginning, then all these values here that are, that are currently 5.6 and so forth are all no, which means there's nothing there. Not zero, because zero is an actual value. There's nothing there. So if we actually access it, it will give us a no. And it'll crash the program if we try to use it and do an operation with it, unless we handle that. So why would we use arrays? Well, why do we want to uh, use uh, declare a new variable for every single instance of something? Rather than declaring a new variable saying Harry's age, Harry's uh, life expectancy, Harry's, uh, I don't know, Harry's state of birth or something, I don't know. Let's say if it's an integer number. We can have a different account balances as well. We can do uh, his savings account, his name, normal account, check account, his long-term savings account, and all those values together, and we can all just put it under Harry's accounts. Or, as we had before with ages, we can say all Harry's milestone ages, something like that. Okay, so we can have a collection of items. And then we don't have to keep defining a new variable name, new variable name, new variable name. We can just use a nice thing here of numbers. Just defer, uh, refer to the correct spot in the list. We can also use the square brackets after the variable name, but that's not very good practice. That comes from C sharp and C++. Please just do it next to the data type. You can also define your array directly. You don't have to define 10 spots because then you have 10 empty null spots, 10 empty spots, which are null spots. Or you can just define all your elements to begin with and you can say string my array two is equal to 
and we start listing them using comma and curly bracers. And we'll automatically make a spot, two spots in this array. If we try to add an extra item to this array afterwards or remove an item afterwards, it will fail because it'll, it'll uh, reference a null item or it just is not defined out of bounds, this exception. So how to access this? Well, we take the variable name, we take the brackets, and we use the position it's in. So 0 points to 5.6, 1 points to 4.5, 2 references 3.3, 3 references that one, and so forth. So if we have my string array 0, it's 1, because that's over here. If it was the first position, that's 2. Or the one position, sorry. It's not the first position, it's the second position, but it's value 1, as we start uh, counting from 0. How do we actually know how long the list is later on? Well, we can just say the my string array 2 dot size. That's it. And it'll give us back how many spots there are, like 10. Okay. So let's actually code that then. So the first thing we're going to do is check for for loop. So currently when we did our... Uh, well, I start with zero. Currently when we did our while loops, all we did was check saying count less than, I don't know, 10, and then we did count plus plus. And let's just print it out so we know what's happening. And let's just print out count. So if you run that, you get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because it's less than 10, and there we go. Now, we really don't like doing this because we have to declare a variable at the beginning, we have to increment at the end, we have to remember all the stuff, and it's not very clean. So if we have a fixed length of something, and we know how many times it's going to run, then we can use a for loop. So we can say int i, you can also call it count if you like as well. Um, and then we can say i is less than 10. And then we're going to, um, how many times we're going to increment it or whatever, or what the increment steps are every time we finish the loop, that count plus plus that we had at the end, that's exactly the same as here. So this is the equivalent of what we did before of Sorry, one second. Of this. Initialization, check of the condition, um, increment or decrement. This increment in our case, go back to the top, check the condition, increment, check on the condition, increment. And that's the same thing as the entire for loop system. Or for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, and i plus plus. So now we can just print that out. Let's print that i. And as you can see, we have not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that was great. But uh, we just have a very much shorter version of the same thing. Instead of having six lines, we have one line and we can check all the conditions that this loop needs right at the beginning. Plus, the compiler can optimize for it. So use the while loop if you're checking for something to always be true and you don't know how many times it's going to be run. But if you know exactly how many times you're going to run something, then run it as a for loop. Because then we can uh, use an increment and we can declare the variable straight in there and it can, the garbage collector can more easily collect that variable once we're done with it. And we won't have problems like uh, variable scoping. So say that we use that i again somewhere else, then we won't have uh, reference the wrong variable or crash the program or something like that. So the second thing is an array. So I'm going to leave that for loop just for now. I just don't want to print out so that if we run it, we don't have anything bad happen. So let's start with making an integer array. Why? Because I want to. <laughs> and we're going to call it Harry. Why? Because we like Harry. And all this is going to do is it's going to be an array with one spot, and that's going to say how old Harry is. Okay, so if we want to then check what is in Harry, well, we want to take the north position, and we're going to say Harry's 18, because he's going to be driving, he's going to be able to drive. So we're going to check if Harry, I'm going to check Harry, and his north position is less than 18, then Harry and is not allowed to drive, I'm not allowed to drive. Uh, otherwise, we can check Harry, and we can say Harry is allowed to get his drivers. That's his fault. Harry is allowed to get his drivers, because it's over 18. If we check this and change this to 17, Harry is not allowed to drive. If I do flip, yeah, it helps. Now, what if we want to do more spots than we said Harry spot 1, apologies, and there he's 18. Okay, 
So that's new int one, how many positions? Exception, array index out of bounds, because we only have one spot available, if we checked over here. Um, if there's only one spot declared, then there's only this one. If we try to reference to this one, that doesn't exist. So the 11th variable here, there's nothing there. No, it doesn't exist. It doesn't know what to do with that. It's trying, like trying to find uh, where you park your car when you don't own a car. <laughs> and if we keep going with the driving analogy. So what if we just wanted to print out a string of people's names, the string of people's usernames? Okay. Oh, let's just make a name as variables for this. And we already knew them all right at the beginning. We all knew that we have Harry, and we know his surname was Potter. And then we have Kyle, and his surname was, I don't know, Bond. <laughs> that should change this to James. We want to keep going with the analogy. And we can leave that there, making the end of this there. We can go as long as we like, we can put a million stuff there. It doesn't matter. Oh, this gray is because I haven't used it. The array is only written to, never read from. So let's just print out every single option of that. Okay, so int i is equal to zero. We checked up here. i is less than how many spots do we have? Four. And i plus plus. That's how many variables we have. And we're going to print out names. And because we want to go through each one every single time we loop, we're just going to say i. Because the first 10, i is 0, so its name's 0, which is that. The second time it loops, it's going to go through names 1, and so forth, and so forth. Right. Uh, shortcuts 2, 3, 4. As you can see, though, this is four options. So this one will never be reached because it's less than 4, therefore, we only get. Not one, two, three. So let's run that. Harry Potter, James, and Bond. If we try to make that five, we'll get an index out of bounds. At exactly the spot, at lesson there, line 25, line 25, here is line 25, try to access it. All right. So we have to change that to four. Yeah. So this is a bit annoying because we have first name, last name, first name, last name. So why don't we just change it to be first names? And then we'll make the same list to be surnames. And instead of having Harry Potter and Potter, we'll just put, uh, sorry, let's do it the other way around. Remove Harry from here. Remove James from here. Potter's surname from here. Bond's surname from here. And we now have first names and surnames. So i is less than. Well, didn't you remember that thing in the uh, PowerPoint where we could just write the array's length, name, and then we could get dot length. So that's the length of the array. How many spots are in it? Dot length. And then we're going to go, first going to print the first names. And then we're going to print the person's surname. Surnames. I'm going to run that. So we get Harry Potter and James Bond. <laughs> Lovely. So the next step is then to make a small hangman game. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to get the user's input. So I'm going to remove this for now. And the input was scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in. And then we have to, of course, import that scanner. First one. Oh. Let's get that. Fix that up. And get the first ask. Um, what is the first? What is your guess? Okay. So we're just, I'm just keeping this there for now, so we know that what we're aiming at. So the first thing we do need to do, or what is your first? What is the word you wish to guess? The word you wish to guess. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is save that to an array. Okay, just to make sure that we can then guess each letter individually, because a string is a collection of characters, so we want to save every character individually. So first we're going to get the input. So we're going to call that uh, guess word. No. String guess word. 
equal to input dot next. Okay, so then we need the answer, which is going to be a collection of characters, or we can make them individual string letters. So each letter can only be one string uh, length, one string, one character in length. But we're still going to say that as a string because a character is a string, but a string is not necessarily a character uh, because a string is a collection of characters. So we're going to call that answer is equal to our guest words length. So we're going to make it to a string the length of guest word. Sorry about this. I haven't used this in a while. A bit slightly differently. So we get our guest word, sorry, dot length. So we get it exactly the length of the guest. And let's just print out the length of that word. Answers uh, character length. And we're just going to add answer dot. So we know how long that is. So in an array, you don't need to use the uh, param uh, parameters, parentheses, because of parentheses, brackets, because that is a method here that belongs to the string class, while this here is a uh, primitive type, which is a string, uh, which is an array of string. What is the word you should guess? Answer. An answer is length is six. One, two, three, four, five, six letters. Yes. So you got six spots. Awesome. So let's just point that out. And let's save that to an array now. So for the ins, i is equal to zero, because we're starting at zero. And then we're gonna make it i is less than the answer dot length. And i plus plus. Okay, so this is going to loop for as long as that array keeps going. And then the first thing we're going to do on the first one is going to get the first character, the first uh, the first character of guest word as our answer. So answer i is equal to guest word i. I'm not sure if this works. Uh, this is Java. So okay, let's string found. Yes, so this doesn't work. So how we do that in Java? Would we take we will be taking guest word dot substring there's a begin and end index returns a string that is a substring of the string so that's the index minus one to get to the last character so it starts at zero if you want hamburger four eight returns urge which is one two three four so it stops there urge which is four characters one two three four stops there so you want to get the uh, i th character, which is 0, and i plus 1. So we get the first letter, and then we get the second letter, third letter, fourth letter, fifth letter, and so forth. So let's then print out the array of answer. And we're going to make sure that each one is on a new line, just to make sure that we have each one separated properly. So when we print out, we're going to print each one out individually. And then we're going to run that. Answer. So each one saved as one position. All right, that's great. Okay, so that's worked out. So now we need to make sure that we get all the user guesses. Now, how many characters or how many times is the user allowed to guess in Hangman? So let's quickly Google that one. Uh, hangman number of guesses. And the number of guesses are. Or not. We have eight guesses. That's great. Okay, so the maximum length of that the person can guess is eight times. So not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight actual tries, so our array list has eight spots. Okay, string user guesses. Actually, it's an array. User guesses. Sequence so new string of eight guesses. Okay. So well, let's, we don't need to print this out anymore. Actually, sorry, we do need that. Um, that's, not, that's not the printout, <laughs> my bad. So we're gonna then ask the user to guess. Well, first we're gonna make a couple of empty spots, um, just so that the next person that plays doesn't see that word instantly. Let's say 20 new lines. Uh, I'm just making an empty line. 
update. Uh, okay. Computer, what do you, what do you, what letter do you get? And the first thing that we're going to do is say that letter. So, sorry, user guess. Uh, so that's the collection. This user guess and user guess for one there. And then put next. Okay. And the first thing we can do is check that the user guess is length. Sorry. Is greater than one. It is not able to be longer than invalid. Only one character is allowed to be guessed at this time. Okay. Because we don't want them to guess the entire uh, alphabet in one go, that would be a bit unfair because uh, then it would just be going straight through. And then we're going to say we're going to go through the entire loop. Um, I guess before the length of the word, which is our answer not length. Less than answer or link. And then I plus plus. Then for every option, we can just go through and get the user's guess. If user guess dot equals, in our case, which we don't care about the case. So if we don't if they want to have caps up running, we don't mind. Because the same word capitalized or not doesn't matter to us. Is equals ignore. Okay. Answer the i position. So if they correctly guess, like we can say, uh, guess the correct letter. And they don't lose a point. Point. And they uh, don't lose a point, and they don't, uh, and they, and the guess is added to the previous letter's guess. So the user guesses, it's uh, no matter what, it's actually added to this uh, letter. User guesses, user guesses dot. So what we could do is we could check. Firstly, uh, we just need to look through the number of user guesses. I is less than user guesses dot length. Plus plus. So we want to put in the first null spot. So user guesses. If user guesses is equal to null. Oh yeah, apologies, we need to get the position. Then user guesses i is equal to user guess. And we can break out of this order. Oh, forgot to add breaks. Okay. So one thing we need to take into account is that we currently are doing it quite inefficiently if we always do the while loop check. What if we want to go halfway through the loop and then we want to chuck ourselves out of the loop? Well, break is an amazing function or amazing, let's say, command. We can actually check what it's called. Break Java. Break statement. There we go. Is that it will terminate early. So it won't actually check the condition. It will instantly break. So ignore this loop, this loop is not nice, we can go through all the numbers, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and if the number is 30, then we break out of this for loop and we continue down here. We don't keep going through the loop. We don't keep evaluating. So if you check here, if 30, because it's going through 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 10, 20, if it's 30 is the next option or the next uh, value, then it will break out of the for loop and get straight over here at the end here. Okay, so break just does that. Uh, breaks out of whatever loop we're in. If this was a while loop, it would break out of the while loop. Okay, so if the user guess is null, then the user guess is the user guess break. Uh, one thing we should actually also do, just in case, is loop through the array twice to see if the person has already guessed that letter. But we're going to be mean, we're going to say if they've already guessed the letter, then it's their own fault for guessing the same letter twice. Okay, just for now. We can check the logic later again if you want to, but yes, we'll do that. So once the user guesses there, then we're going to do it like that. Okay, 
and we're going to just keep adding it. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. So the first letter that's null, we'll do that. Okay. If the user guess dot equals ignore case is the answer letter, then we can print out and guess the correct letter. So let's see if that works just for now. Answer. We have that all that null space, all that white space because we did that. And we're going to guess A. We guessed the correct letter because A was the correct letter. So let's pick a letter that wasn't in there in answer. And let's pick Q. And that doesn't print anything out because we didn't actually guess the correct letter. So we can then put that here has to actually go in a loop. Because invalid, only one character is allowed to be guessed at a time, because they'll keep guessing this the entire time. While well, true. So let's move this here into there. And at the end of this, we're just going to check if the if user guess uh, user guesses dot uh, well actually just now we'll do this later. And if the user guess equals you guess the correct letter, and if they don't get there, we'll say uh, that letter so it is not correct. Okay, so we actually can do something like this, else if um, I I is equal to answer or length or one. So it's the last option. Then we can say we can then say that it's wrong, and we can say incorrect. Let's make an array just to get all the incorrect guesses. Uh, string array of incorrect guesses. Uh, incorrect guesses. String array. And there's eight spots there. We can clean this up later. I just don't. I just want to get it done for now. Then we go incorrect guesses, and we can actually copy this loop here that we have. I would have made that a method, but we're doing methods next week. And we can't use the same i letter because we're going to have a problem with that loop because i is already being used. And it's also j plus plus. And then we're just going to do that and give, give it to the first empty spot. And we're going to tell the user that is an incorrect guess letter. We can do that so you get. And then the user can guess again. So you guess the correct letter or you guess the wrong letter right at the end of the loop. And we're going to have uh, what user what letter would you like to guess? Like to guess. Make that look nicer. Okay. So currently we have a question for the actual getting the user's uh, answer. We then convert that into user guesses into a actual array just so we can check each letter individually and we can use what, what letters they guess. Invalid one character starts to be guessed at the time if they do more than one character just to make a check and I think we should actually punish the user for that one and we can actually just increase their score and then go back to the beginning of the loop. But we're not going to do that right now. All we're going to do is say that's invalid, and then we're going to go through each one individually. Because as you could guess, if we check here for the correct answer length, equals ignore case, they will never be equal because there will be two letters. So they'll be punished anyways, and the score will increase by one. So let's just have a score, and the score will be something like... Put that in right at the top here. In user score, let's see if it's zero to begin with. And we're going to make that user score one if they fail that. And then if the user score is here, let's just remove that. So if this is equal to eight, then they failed. Actually, sorry, less than eight. They failed. And then we're just going to be like, uh, make a boolean just to see if the one user has one, which is equal to false to begin with. And we're just going to be, I'll put that into here. If the user has one, 
you won game. And then I'll say lost. Give it lost. Only was five guys there. <laughs> okay. So let's see how that currently looks like. That shouldn't really do much. So answer. What would you like to guess? A. Guess the correct letter. The letter is not correct. So why is that happening? Because that letter is not correct because it doesn't actually break out of the for loop once we actually hit the correct letter. So we need to break because I have it correct. There, and we can close the loop. Close the running program. Answer. What, what letter would you like to guess? A. You guessed the correct letter. User, what would you like to guess? P. The letter is not correct. And then what would you like to guess? And then we can keep going like that. And we can get incorrect letters just to make sure. And at one point, the score should hit 8. So you guessed 8 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times here. Incorrect guesses, therefore we lost the game. Oh, how sad. Now, the problem we have is that if we write answer, A, M, S, W, E, R, then we already have the letter guessed, or the word guessed. So what we should check is correct guesses and incorrect guesses. So currently we're saving all the user guesses over here for just adding them to the array until they get it incorrect. So we don't actually need this user score plus plus because we're already uh, storing it over here. So we can actually just do this while loop over here and we can just get the user guesses dot link. But we can't actually do that because we have null here. So if we were using an array list, which we'll start doing next week, and we can actually just get the length of the list or the size of the list and we can go straight for that instead of looping through it the entire time. So the you know, correct the correct letter, well we could make it so that um, the we can check here that the person has guessed the correct letter. Sorry, one thing, second just thinking. We could make it so that if these user score The user score is here, and we can just check if the uh, we can just get another integer just to check. Uh, well, actually, this is you don't use the score, this is user loss. So, user loss, oh, uh, your user incorrect guesses. I'm just making a really long word because it's fun. As you can see, if you click control R, all of them are renamed, and then this is the user score, which starts at zero. And all this does is track that the user's guesses number is correct. And we need to also have a check that the user score, if the user score is equal to the answers.length, and the boolean is that they have won the game. You have won the game. User has won, it's equal to true. And if, if the incorrect guesses add to that, and the user has lost, which was what we did up here. Okay, so in this while loop, user has incorrect guesses, um, user has one is equal to false, where does all the users has one? So this one here is incorrect guesses plus plus, instead of doing it up there, uh, is equal to eight. Then user has one. And then all we do here is having correct guesses. And the while loop is less than eight, so once it hits eight, or user has one, which is true, then we will break out of this loop. Okay, so let's close this. Let's just check the answer. answer. A N S W E R. Oh no, this hasn't worked yet. What did we do wrong? Well, let's debug the program, shall we? Every time we make a guess. If the user score is equal to answer.length. Okay, let's check how many times we get there. There's the debugger button right next to it, which is control F5. We get this lovely large thing. Answer. 
80. Then we get to here. Let's check our variables over here. Incorrect guesses. We currently have these are all the letters that haven't been guessed here. We have the answer 0 to 6. Uh, 0 to 5, sorry. 6 spots. This answer is 6 words. The user has won as false. The user's incorrect guesses is 0. The user's score for winning as he reached 1. And the user guesses is that. There's currently seven options that we have at the bottom here. We have no. So they've never he's never had any incorrect ones yet. Oh sorry, he has. He's guessed A. Uh, we messed that one up because we're not supposed to instantly add to user guesses, but we'll clean that up a little bit later. So let's go to the next stop. And the output. What's the next letter that we want to guess? And now we get here the incorrect guesses, the answer not one. We already know that one, so we're checking for the incorrect guesses, which is currently got null values. The user is one, still false. The user guesses and the user scores two. Let's go again. I'm going to do that till ends. And we're just going to keep going till we get to the end, just to check. It's going to take a bit. And sort of next part, output. And one more time. R. So now this should be correct. Let's just add an extra breakpoint just at the end of this loop. Uh, we can't do it while we're doing this running. So the answer is currently uh, incorrect guess is zero. User has one is false. The user guesses is six. The user score is six. Let's run this. So this should be when we run this again. So this should be the time after we have won. Let's just guess A again. So the answer we should have won, user has won, is true. So this loop here of user has won is not working. So what we need to do is write at the beginning, or write at the end, depending how you feel like. Actually, let's put it right at the end. User has won. This is true, and we can break out of the loop. So this is a very inefficient way of doing Hangman. You can do this way more efficiently, but it's just so that we use a lot of relates. That's the idea behind it. A N S W E R. You won the game. Congratulations. All right. So what I want you to do is make this code a bit more efficient. So I'm going to put this onto GitHub. Um, how GitHub works is that you just pick something like a, you pick an array, or you sorry, you pick a project. This is a dark theme. Uh, you guys are okay to using a light theme, so let's just use that instead. And then you just go on a project. Um, let's go here. There, all the files are there, and all you do is you click the download zip button. Then you can click download zip. Congratulations, then here's the project, and you oh, and you drag and drop this out. You can use something like 7-zip, I'll link it in the description, but you should be able to do it using base Windows stuff. And just drag and drop this into the folder that you want, and then you can mess around with it straight. So what I want you to do in this program, the first thing I want you to do is remove this one. Because, oh, actually, sorry, print out all the incorrect guesses that the user has, okay? Every single time they lose, print out the incorrect guesses. And as you saw from over here, in the Hangman game, you have different stuff. So let's get Hangman ASCII. I want you to print out all the ASCII art of Hangman being lost. Here you go, there they are, let's print it out. A very nice option here. Uh, no, okay, you don't need to do that, but it's just as an in case, if you want to do it, you can print out each step individually, save it as a, an array or something. As you can see, uh, so the north one has that, one, two has that, three, four, five, six. So this one here, this hang ASCII art is nice. So then you can do the user score like that. The second thing I want you to do is this user has one. Well, the user has one is not really required in terms of we can actually do 
b zeros one into one variable into four user incorrect guesses. Because the user has one, we can just overwrite it and use something like a test variable, let's say, and we can make it one million. So instead of getting user incorrect guesses, we can use user uh, user uh, user score, and we can make it minus one. And if it's minus one, then they won. So if user incorrect guesses is less than eight, or user incorrect guesses is our test variable or our specific uh, reserve variable, which is minus one because it never can get to minus one, then if they have minus one, then they win. So then we don't need this Boolean true one or loss. We can literally just check if minus one, if greater than one, then they've lost. If less than one, they've won. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, just for cleaning up what we have here. Then the second thing is, is that we're currently looping through all these arrays. Well, one thing I want you to do is there's a special for loop. And what we can do is we first say the type, and we give each item in this list a certain name, something like my list zero. So each one of these items, and we're going to do it for user guesses, and we're going to call it user guess or user, well, we already uh, defined a variable of user guess. So let's call, call it user um, input. And then we're going to do it for the array of user guesses. So what this does is that for instead of having uh, user guesses i, it's not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this user input is the equivalent of this. So on the first time it loops through, this is the same as user guesses 1, or 0, sorry. And it's user guesses 2, or 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, up to the length of how many user guesses there are. So instead of going through each position individually, uh, using i, referencing i, we can just use the user input instead. So this will be user input. Uh, if this here rewritten will be if user input is equal to null, then user uh, input is equal to user guess. Right. So this is the equivalent of that one here. It's an unused assignment because we're overwriting it here. What's the same variable value? So this is the same as that. Whichever one you like, use whatever, it doesn't matter. I personally prefer using this one when dealing with objects if the counter isn't required. As an example, we kind of need the counter for something like going through. Actually, we don't need it in our case. Yeah, we don't need it in our case because this here will change then to each individual and this one here. Oh wait, we might need it for this one for in dot answers dot length. I is equal to answers dot length. So what you can also do in this one here is you can just get the final answer in the array and check if those two are equal. So if answer, um, if user input, let's check what we can do with that. Oh, is the last one, index of, returns the index of the first occurrence, so it checks where in the array it belongs to, and then we can just do uh, what is the last index of, so that's something we can also use, or we can use matches the last value of the array, so we can do this, and then we can do uh, user guesses dot um, user guesses minus one of course so we can check if that matches the final one and this there's a return variable we don't need to care about that so we'll check if it's the last one the other thing you can do instead of using this roundabout user guesses i is equal to null or actually sorry the comparison that we're doing over here user guesses ignore or equal case instead of using an array we could also use something like user guess dot contains. So I would have the variable, the letter in the variable. We can also use that. So you can you can rewrite this in multiple different ways. So just uh, play around with it, maybe add it so that you can have uh, the printed out uh, hangman, maybe clean up some code because this is quite dirty, because you can do this way simpler and way shorter than this using contains as an example, but then you're not using arrays. I just wanted to use arrays, but it's fine. You can use that if you feel like it. 
then maybe you can rewrite this to use array lists, which we'll be doing in the next lesson. I hope to be doing objects and methods in that one. And then maybe make it so that the user can actually say how many tries they want. But that would be a bit lame to do. Or also print out then 50 person, say used answer is the answer, then there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Just print out that there are six options. And then if they guess A, then we have A. So print out all the ones that are not or that are being guessed that are correct. And if they guess answer W, then we have A, one, two, three, W, E, R. And yeah. So make it look like that. So we can use two arrays for that one with the guess letters that are correct and one with the incorrect letters. So what we could do then is we could go through this loop and where the user guesses list we have here, currently we aren't using that. We can guess the correct word, then we get the position on the user guesses, the position of i is equal to the user guess. Because then we have the correct get letter guessed. So if we do it better, we could break it through like this. Our uh, debugger, A. If we then check, oh, well, that will instantly win. I need to make the word slightly longer, sorry. Uh, I meant to just guess the letter A. So if we go answer, we guess the letter A. And we check our variables here. The user guessed, user guesses. And the first letter is A. So then we can print out all those, wherever it's null, we can print out that underscore instead. So at the end of this, we can make a for loop. Before the, we ask the user to guess again, we can just have, uh, well, we can put this at the end because it only happened at the end. New down here. So I'll print out the word. Oh, letter, sorry. And underscore is null. We just need to make that quick check as well. So we can then we can print it out as the letter there until they printed out all the correct one. And we can make it if user guesses is equal to the length of the answer dot length, which is this one. We can if um, while it's not equal in length, then we can do that. I'll keep going, and then we can check if they're both user guesses is equal to the uh, answer dot length and the user incorrect guesses is less than eight or something. Then we can do it because we currently we're using an OR function. But yeah, just be sure that this logic doesn't require and and. But currently it doesn't because these are both true. So therefore we'll keep going. All right, so I hope this doesn't confuse you too much. Just play around with it, see what you can come up with. Um, the hangman is can be complex, can be simple, depending how you think. Don't worry too much about it because well, this do a lot of the different things, and then this will be a lot easier using array lists instead of arrays, because arrays have a fixed length and array lists don't. Um, yeah, we'll do that next week. So we're going to handle objects, we're going to handle methods, and we're going to handle array lists next week. Well, I hope to do that. We have about 70 minutes to do it in. So if we don't, we don't manage to cover it in that time, then I'll just do it the next week and so forth. Basically, see how far we get. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you learned something out of this, and I hope you can actually see what it is this time, because I'm going to be uploading it at 1080p instead of at 720, and I increase the text size uh, after you guys inform me that you have trouble seeing it at lower resolutions. Right, thanks for watching.